Hey everybody, we're back with another video. We finally had some time to actually sit down and do an unboxing. Got six boxes of fish this week to get through. Some interesting things, a lot of more bread and butter, but if something catches your eye, let's get to it. Got no camera operator today, so you'll have to bear with the shoddy camera work, but let's get to it. Alright, first up, we've got other than the cherry barb, uh, pretty common, small, peaceful barb. The males get really red, the females kind of stay more of a brownish color with a dark line on them. Uh, really bright red in the males, nice, peaceful community fish. And we got a big old discus. This is a leopard. Big old three inch. Can't really see them. They're quite shy in the bag. Next up, Cardinal Tetra. So oh god, their bag is so wet. You can't see anything. They come in with really bad color in the bag because they're all stressed in the in the dark. Nice, super bright, probably the most popular fish we sell. Powder blue grommies. These are the females. Very small, peaceful, kind of centerpiece fish in a smaller tank. Get along with almost all your community stuff. Good solo or in groups. are so tiny. These are green neons. This is like a close relative of both the cardinal and the neon tetra. Uh, these ones stay really small. Good for if you like that neon tetra look but you have a bit of a smaller tank you can get a bit more of these in there. They cap out at like an inch. Uh, slightly more of a turquoisey color to their line instead of blue and then they have kind of a green coloration across their back which you can't really see in here but Trust me, that's what they look like. Next up we've got bamboo. These are always popular. Uh, peaceful, large, filter-feeding shrimp. So they'll get along with anyone that doesn't eat them, pretty much. They basically will just find a spot in the tank that they like to flow, and then they'll get their little fans out and start feeding out of the water column. It's better in a mature tank so that there's plenty of stuff for them to eat. But you can crush up flake and other things super finely and they'll pick it out of the water. Got some female betas here. These are koi. It says six, but I only see three in the bag. So that's interesting. And last but not least from this box, we have rainbow gobies. Stiphodon. The males get a lot of color. They kind of darken up and get some reds and black and goldish on them. Uh, peaceful algae grazer. Come from faster flowing streams like cooler water, but they do all right so up in higher 70s as well. Uh, can be kind of picky eaters, but I've seen them eat Rapashi and extreme and all kinds of foods, so not too insanely picky like an autosynclus or anything. But a uh, nice little algae eater for a smallish tank. Alright, well, let's move on to the second box. Okay, here goes box number two. And first up, we've got silver tip tetras. Uh, Larger than like your typical neon or cardinal, they're a couple inches. You can't tell at all here, but uh, they get uh, some nice sexual dimorphism where the males turn orange and the females turn yellow. And they get their name from like white tips on the end of their fins, which you can kind of see here, but not much. So it's a kind of a two for one fish where you have two colors. Next 
Next up, we've got a zebra eel. This is a little spiny eel. And this one gets about a foot long. They like to burrow, eat worms, and get out of tanks. So make sure it's super secure if you get one of these guys. Uh, pretty picky, tend to not ever eat dry food, so he'll be feeding a lot of frozen or live. But uh, peaceful enough to get along with things that won't fit in their mouth. So no super tiny fish with them, but they're going to be fine and with a lot of like larger schoolers and peaceful fish. German blue rams, probably the most popular of the rams. These guys are a little more difficult to take care of than most fish, so definitely do some research. They like pretty soft water and hot water especially. That's what I've found to be really key to keeping them happy is get them at like 82 or even 84. So it can be kind of limiting on their tank mates, but peaceful dwarf cichlid. Gonna get along with most fish. They almost stick to the bottom. If they're breeding, they can get kind of territorial. But get along well with a lot of stuff as long as you can meet their other requirements. Cynodonus lucipinus. These are called dwarf petricolas. They're a little small schooling catfish from Africa, Lake Tanganyika to be specific. Um, they stay fairly small, only get about three inches. But they, they're like hardy enough to hold their own in like African cichlid tanks, but peaceful enough to get along in even community tanks, so they're really versatile. Really cool if you get enough of them, you will actually see them a lot more. When you just have a couple, they'll hide in the rocks until it's time to eat. But when you get a big group of them, they'll actually school around, so it's really neat to see. Black ghost knife, aka one long fin that is blind, or mostly blind. They use electrosensitivity to find prey. They'll hide almost all the time until it's time to eat. Once they're really settled in, I know people have had them like eat out of their hands and stuff, so they can be fairly personable. This is one that always catches people's eyes in the store because they're super unique, but you do need a big tank to keep them long term. They get about a foot and a half long, so you gotta be careful with tank mates who will be food as this thing grows. Hillstream loaches. These are uh, algae grazer. Come from fast flowing streams, like a little cooler water, but they do really well even up to like high temperatures. You see a lot of sources say to keep them cold, to keep them happy, but I've heard about them breeding all the way above 80, so pretty versatile. Not super picky, but they can be kind of picky about their food, similar to those uh, gobies from earlier. Like to, like a teat algae, they will eat like bloodworms and stuff, but you gotta be not giving them too much protein, because that's not really their natural diet, but they'll eat extreme scrapers or rapashi and even vegetables. And we've got albino quarries. Just peaceful schooling, bottom catfish. I find the albinos to be a lot more active than a lot of their counterparts. Even the like regular colored same species, the bronze. They like to swim up a lot compared to a lot of the other quarries. I'm not sure why that is, but they're always swimming around the tank. So I'll try to get at least six of these guys if you're keeping them to keep them happy. And we've got diamond head neon tetras. This is one that's been around for a while. I don't think we've ever actually carried it. It's just a neon tetra that's been line bred for a different coloration. So you can't really tell in the bags here, but Essentially, they have like a shiny white all the way going up on top of their head instead of your typical neon coloration. So you kind of get a bright spot if you're looking from above. So it's good if your tank is lower. You can kind of get the shine from the top of these guys, which is unique. 
they will school with regular neons because they're just the same species, so you can kind of mix and match, but I would generally try to keep the schools uh, the same because it looks a little weird when they're mixed. And last from this bag, we have pygmy quarries. Same thing as before with the other quarry. I'll try to keep them in groups of at least six. These ones stay really small, like capping out at maybe an inch. I think probably even less, like three quarters of an inch. Uh, good little bottom feeders. Not really picky about what they eat. They're omnivorous scavengers, so they'll eat basically any food you can find on the bottom. Stay small that they're good in for like nano tanks. They're not ever gonna harass anyone. Alright, and let's move on to bag three. Okay, box number three. Sumo loaches. Covered these a few times, but they're uh, sort of a unique ish loach. You don't see something like this bottom feeding loach, but they're a predator loach, so. They'll, like, I guess all loaches really are predators, but they are more of like an active predator rather than just like like the botia types schooling around, eating little things off the bottom. So these guys are a little more territorial and aggressive, so you got to be careful with your other bottom feeders. They can kind of chase them away, but uh, they get some nice like yellows and reds on them as they age. Pretty cool little loach. Little discus, tiny checkerboard, just barely starting to get his patterning. Another discus, snow white, little guy. These are cool, we've had these a few times. This is a centipede knife fish. This one is pretty big already. These guys stay smaller than the black coast we saw earlier, capping out at around a foot. Uh, you can kind of tell why they get their name centipede. They move this bottom fin here and it looks like they've got little legs crawling around. Uh, these guys have a really interesting uh, defense mechanism that people see in the store and often think they're dead because they will just lay on the ground when they're not active, or just on their side completely still, mimicking like leaf litter, so they hide. And same kind of diet, they'll eat uh, small crustaceans and insect larvae and worms and all sorts of stuff, pretty picky, not going to eat dry food very much. But this one is pretty big, cool looking pattern. Looks like sword tails. Live bear, very similar looking to a platy, but they have the long sword in the males. More aggressive than like mollies or platies in my experience. We've got some angelfish. These are koi. Like a. Uh, all angels, you want to keep them in groups if you can. They like to the school. Auto sinkless. Little algae eater. Uh, very efficient. These ones are actually looking a lot more plump than they usually come in, so that's good. But uh, very picky eaters. They like. Uh, Diatom algae especially, they'll eat other algaes, but don't eat much outside of algae. I've seen them eat some rapashi, or they'll eat like cucumbers, zucchini, vegetable stuff. Not really going to eat your wafers generally, so you got to be really careful not to let these guys starve. A lot of people try to put them in little tanks because they're a little pleco, but they like groups to keep them happy, and they're so efficient at eating algae, you can end up starving them if you're not careful. So best in groups of six plus in bigger tanks. Pea puffers, little murder machines. Uh, very small puffers. These guys get like a little bit over an inch. 
Best is the species only tank. You can generally keep females together pretty well. Multiple males can be more iffy depending on the space. Ideally at least a five gallon for one and then every three or four gallons more you have out of one or two. But uh, not great tank mates for anything. I, I've tried a bunch of different stuff and they always become too nippy. But I've seen some people keep them with certain things, so it is possible. And finally, in this bag, we've got the vampire shrimp, or giant blue wood shrimp. Intimidating name, peaceful filter feeding shrimp, just like the bamboos, but these guys get bigger. You get a lot of variation in color, all the way from like a bright blue to even like a pink. So they don't always live up to their giant blue wood shrimp name in my opinion, but vampire shrimp sounds cooler, so. Uh, they get up to like six inches, so long term you'll probably want a pretty good sized tank. And they can hold their own against most things, but probably don't try to put them in with big cichlids. All right, and that's the end of box three. All right, box number four, here we go. And we've got some powder blue male garamis. Uh, a lot more aggressive than the female, so you try to not keep multiple males together generally, unless it's a pretty big tank. Uh, definitely don't try to keep them with their, their anabantoids like betas, but they'll do all right in community tanks, but you just gotta watch them. Sometimes you get pretty ornery ones. Harlequin Rasboras. Nice schooling, a little larger, get up two inches, even two inches and change sometimes in really big ones. Uh, nice because they keep a really tight school and don't kind of spread out like you see with the Cardinals and Neons. So if you want that really good schooling action, these are a good option. We'll mostly stay in the mid to upper water. So you can get some nice tank stratification with them schooling around. Nerite snails. Just a nice little algae eating snail. They can't reproduce in fresh water, so you'll never run into a snail population problem from these guys alone. Decent algae eaters for a smaller tank. Another discus, a little blue diamond. Miguelito Cories. I don't think we've carried these ones before. They're kind of similar to like a panda or something like that. Similar colorations. More of a long snout. These ones are already pretty big. Like all Cories, try to keep at least six. Gold white clouds. Another sort of decent school that sticks together most of the time. These ones kind of have a bright yellow color with some red finish. They're just a line bread version of your typical white clouds. Uh, they can handle cooler water, so if you're running an unheated tank, this is a good option. I mean, we don't carry too many things that handle cold water all that well, so that's a good one. But they do handle tropical temperatures as well, so they can mix with pretty much anything. That won't eat them, obviously. And then Neon Tetras. Uh, what do you say about Neons? They're popular, bright colored, fairly cheap fish. Kind of a loose schooler. Best to keep 6 plus. Do well in like any tank, kind of 10 gallons or more. And that was a quick old box. Let's move on to box 5. Alright, so box number 5. Not a lot of bags in this one. I've got some more sword tails. These are just black. Same thing goes with them, same species. These are marble hatchet fish. Don't really have their color so much in the bags. 
They kind of get almost a blue sheen to them and a lot of darker patterning. They'll spend most of their time hanging out at the top of the water. Uh, you gotta make sure your tank is really secure because they like to jump, but... Pretty peaceful little fish. But then it looks like we've got some rope fish. Uh, Bice your relative. These guys get a bit over a foot long. They'll eat things that fit in their mouth, but they stay fairly skinny, so they don't uh, have quite as big of a jaw as like your regular bichers. But they are massive escape artists, so your tank has to be extremely secure to keep these guys. Uh, they like to be kept in groups, but they're fine solo as well. Always popular, so these guys go super quick. And we've got another bag of rope fish. And... Rummy Nose Tetras. One of our most popular Tetras. Uh, they get bright red noses and kind of have a flag tail. Another one of the like tight schoolers, so you get really good schooling action as you get like have a big school of these guys. And uh, they mostly school near the bottom, so they do pair well if you like a lot of schooling to, with those harlequins from earlier. You can have schoolers at the top and bottom. But they get along with just about everything, as long as it's not something that will try to eat them. And the last bag is just uh, another bag of Romeos. So let's move on to bag number five, box six, I guess. Alright, last box. Got some clown keelys. These are a micro predator, topwater swimmer. Uh, the males get a lot of color, especially they get reds and blues and pretty long tails and their black stripes. Uh, good for any kind of nano tank. They will eat like shrimp babies, theoretically, if they're too close to the top, but they don't really stray too low, so they're usually okay to an extent. They get inch and change, uh, mostly good with just other small fish. Like most Keelys, they're jumpers, so you gotta make sure your tank is pretty secure, but not too bad. And we've got some neon blue rasboras. You can't see it at all in the bag, but there, that whole top side that is looking pretty clear right now will darken into like a, a dark blue, all green almost, with like some shimmer to it. And then the belly kind of turns red. So another nano fish, good for small tanks. Like we've got some uh, bag leakage on our assassin snail bag here, but that'll be all right. Good for killing little pest snails. They re will reproduce as well, so you gotta be careful not to overdo it, but they do reproduce much, much slower than a pest snail, so you're probably not gonna get overrun. And more dwarf petricolas. African butterfly fish. These are a unique one that we don't get super often. They're a topwater predator. Uh, a lot of times people will see them and think there's a dead fish in the tank because they're just floating almost like they're upside down, but they essentially do not leave the surface of the water, hunt bugs and stuff. Uh, they'll eat any kind of floating food. I've even seen them eat flakes, so they're not really all that picky. But a really unique fish. There's a few of those in here. Another butterfly. And the third. And we got a blue Medusa Pleco. Er, yeah, not a blue Medusa, blue Phantom, sorry. Uh, okay, algae eater, omnivore, unique like pattern. These guys get like six inches, I believe, maybe seven. Slow grower, but uh, one of the more popular of the fancy plecos. We have a just a 
Crown Delbeda. Kind of pretty cool coloration for just an assorted. That is just an assorted half moon. That's a lot better color than you usually see from the assorted ones. Generally, they're just like one solid color, so that's that's going to be a steal for someone. Chili Rasboras, another super tiny nano fish. These guys get really bright red with some black on them as they age. Like one of the most intense reds you'll see in a freshwater tank, so really cool looking fish for a small tank. And we have a Queen Arabesque. This one's already pretty big. This is a pretty expensive fancy pleco. They are a carnivore, like not a good algae eater, so this is not one you want to get to clean your tank, but uh, if you want a unique looking pleco, this is one. This one is nearly full grown, I think. And the final bag, it is Celestial Pearl Danios. Celestictes marginatus. Uh, these guys are really cool nano fish. They look like a little brook trout, so they'll mostly school kind of in the lower portion of the tank, but uh, when they're comfortable, they will move into that water as well. Really, really unique looking nano fish, kind of on the spendier side, but one of my favorite nanos for sure. And that is all the fish. And that's everything. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about any of the species that you saw, hit us up below or give us a call. If you like anything else, we can do that too. And one final announcement before we go, we're actually going to be giving away a 46 gallon bow front with stand. Uh, it's used and it's missing a top, so keep that in mind. But it's free. Uh, it's going to be a raffle. One entry per customer. Just come into the store if you're interested. You can take a look at it. Have a good one.